I want to thank God for the opportunity we have this evening to meet on this platform again. It's a privilege that is priceless in the sight of God. Thank God for technology. And I pray that the presence of God and the peace of God will not depart from your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, before I begin to share the word of God tonight, let me make the following announcement that will help every one of us connecting to this program. The first one is that by the grace of God, this Saturday, uh, 18th of July, by 6 p.m. Nigerian time, we will be on for Leading Light Fellowship. Leading Light Fellowship is a program that God had ordained for the development of the leaders of tomorrow today. And it is a program that you cannot afford to miss this Saturday, by the grace of God, on this platform, Leading Light Fellowship, 6 p.m. Nigerian time. Make sure you invite your friends and those who believe that they have a future destiny of leadership in whatever area of life. So it's very important. And more importantly, too, let me also intimate you with the school that God started with us last month, Destiny and Leadership School. We have started last month with the first lesson. And this month, by the grace of God, will be coming up on the last Sunday of this month, that is 26th July. By the grace of God, last Sunday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Nigerian time. We did it 9, to 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. last month. But this month, by the grace of God, we are bringing it forward 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. so that more people can participate in the program. For Destiny and Leadership School, you will have to register. The details of your registration and the format that the registration for this month will take will be on our flyers. Just comply with all the instructions there and you will be on ready for the program. Those that have joined last month, make sure you attend to your assignment and compile your questions, send it ahead. This is the period for sending questions to our Telegram platform created especially for Destiny and Leadership School. If you have not downloaded Telegram, the tel I mean, your, your Telegram application on your device, do so and let us know so that we can add you to the Telegram, uh, to the platform on Telegram specifically for Destiny and Leadership School, so that you can get information that has to do with the school, and then you can send your questions. Send your questions, especially your questions on the first lesson. Send it be, be, before the day. My intention, by the grace of God, is that once we can see all the questions, we compile it, we'll devote at least 30 minutes in the next class to address those questions before we take lesson two. And the TLS for now, the first one year, we are going to look at basic leadership course. And in the basic leadership course, we will be having 12 basic lessons that has to do with leadership. The first lesson is gone. The second lesson will be for July this month, 26th of July, 7 to 9 p.m. Anyone that did not attend the first lesson can join. You can join DLS at any point you choose to join, but it will mean that you will have to register for all the lectures you have missed, and then the notes will be sent to your email. Then you can take all the notes, then digest them, and then take all your assignments before you can be certificated after the 12th lesson. It is very, very important. And um, for those who have joined, make sure that consistency is the key. Once you have joined last month, or you join this month, or any time you join, make sure you are consistent until you are through with the 12 lessons. It is well with you in Jesus' name. So by the time we're through with this program, I'm going to repeat the announcement again 
so that more people can have understanding of how things run, especially on Destiny and Leadership School. All the other programs we're having on Zoom is free, but Destiny and Leadership School, you will have to register with a token of 1,000 Naira. It is important, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we give you all the glory. We want to thank you for the opportunity to fellowship. Thank you for the spirit of grace. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the truth, the light of the word of God reaching out to us wherever we are. Thank you, Father. Lord, tonight I ask that there will be an accurate declaration of the truth and accurate understanding that our lives and destiny will not remain the same. Let there be a touch from heaven, bringing understanding and helping everyone to connect to your mind for his or her life. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now, tonight, before we round up the program, I want to look at anointed practices for a glorious future. Anointed practices for a glorious future. That is the topic of the teaching that the Holy Spirit dropped upon my heart tonight. Anointed practices for a glorious future. I'm going to read from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. In another translation of the Bible, it says, to give you a future and a hope. You know, the future is what everybody is excited about. The future is what everybody is praying about and fasting about. I've seen a lot of people that probably their today is not too good. They have a hope that ah, tomorrow will be good. My future is great. My future is wonderful. And then everybody keeps believing that there is a glorious future ahead. That's true. But tonight, it's a privilege to look at the practices that will truly, truly make the future a glorious one. It is not everybody that has the hope that the future will be glorious, that eventually gets to a glorious future. A lot, a lot of people just have the hope that the future will be glorious. And unfortunately, by the time they get to the future, they discover that there is no glory in that future. So their hope has been an empty wish all the while. But let me tell you tonight that the future does not just appear. There are practices that take you to the future. There are things you must be doing every day, every day, that becomes the substance of your hope for a glorious future. If you fail to do those things, a glorious future will just be a wish that will never materialize. It is very important. And um, it is never in doubt, as far as God is concerned, that the will of God is to lead you to a glorious future. That is never in doubt. That's the first thing I want you to take note. The will of God is to lead you to a glorious future, especially when you are a child of God, when you are born again. When you give your life to Jesus, you have started a journey. You have begun a journey to a glorious future. So under God's economy, his will for your life is that he wants to lead you to a glorious future. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, that I read, the other time, God says that he desires to give you a future and a hope. A future and a hope. Or in the language of King James Version, to give you an expected end. The end that we expect. The end of glory. The end of success. The end of grace. The end of every good thing that you expect for your life. It is the will of God to do that. But it is important to know that God's desire alone cannot automatically guarantee a glorious future for you. God's desire alone, God's will alone, cannot automatically guarantee a glorious future for you. Your personal practices and your personal habits must always be aligned with God's desire to make a glorious future a reality. It's very important. It's going to be an error or a sad reality to get to the future only to discover that there is no glory in the future. From now, 
You must be intentional about the future you are heading to. You must be intentional about what you are doing today and what you should not be doing today, the practices you are following, the habits you are forming, the relationship you are having, and every other thing today. You must be intentional about them so that you can actually have a glorious future because the glorious future will not just appear on its own. It is very, very important. So your personal desire and habit must always be in alignment with the desire of God so that you can make a glorious future a reality. The truth of the matter is that you have a major contribution to determining how glorious your future will look like. You have a major contribution. You must take responsibility for your own contribution. You must identify your contributions under God to make your future glorious. God is not going to do what you are supposed to do, and you can never do what God is supposed to do. God is constant and committed to whatever he is supposed to do for us as our God, but we must also be constant and committed and intentional about what we are supposed to do so that the future in your the future of your marriage, the future of your academics, the future of your ministry, the future of your life, the future of your family, the future generally can carry a signal of the glory of God. So you must know that you have a major contribution to determining how your future will look like. Your future is not just a function of prayer and fasting alone. This is not to disparage prayer or to despise fasting. But we have a praying generation and a fasting generation that lack knowledge. The Bible says my people perish and they even go into captivity because of lack of knowledge. Spirituality without knowledge is empty. Praying without knowledge of the word of God and knowledge of your personal responsibility under God to secure a glorious future is just wasting your time. So we have people that are praying in ignorance. What you are supposed to practically be responsible for, prayer can never replace it. Prayer cannot substitute for irresponsibility. Prayer cannot substitute for lack of knowledge. Fasting also cannot. It's important. Even though prayer and fasting are very important as we move to the future, under God, but it is important to know that prayer, your future, is not just a function of prayer and fasting alone. It is also a function of your daily anointed practices. Either we like it or not, every day, day in, day out, day in, day out, we're getting closer to the future. So what we are doing every day determines what the future is going to look like. So start to take responsibility Start to pray with knowledge. Start to be responsible and take steps that will make the future to become glorious. Beloved, the practices of a man determines his experiences in life. There is no two way about it. The practices of a man determines his experiences in life. Your current experience is a direct function of your habitual practice. Whatever may be your current experience today, it is simply a direct uh, function of your habitual practice. Your habitual practice will produce your current experience. So check your current experience to be. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it expected? Is it interesting or not? Then check your habits because either you like it or not, what you do every day determines your experiences, determines your outcome. It is very, very important. Praying to change an undesirable experience without taking practical steps to changing negative practices is an exercise in futility. Let me take that statement again. Praying to change an undesirable experience without taking practical steps to changing negative practices is an exercise in futility. When you keep praying that your experience will change for the better, but the practices that are generating those negative experiences, you are not taking practical steps to change those practices on a daily basis and replace them with correct, godly, anointed practices. You will just be wasting your time. 
you will just be praying and praying and nothing will happen as long as your practices have not changed. It is important. Addiction to practices that are consistent with the word of God will take the future out of the control of causes. When you are addicted to the practices, anointed practices, when you are addicted to godly practices that are consistent with the word of God, you are simply going to take your future out of the control of causes. You are going to take your future out of the control and the assault of the devil into unlimited realms of blessing and glory. When you are addicted to anointed practices, practices that are in alignment with the word of God, you will take your future away from the devil. You will take your future away from causes and other negative experiences and then you will take it into the unlimited realms of blessing and glory. When a man's life practices are informed by, the in, by incurable obedience to the word of God, a glorious future becomes inevitable. Let me take that statement again. When a man's life practices are informed by incurable obedience to the word of God, a glorious future becomes inevitable. Not even the devil can stop your glorious future. When your practices are informed by incurable obedience to the word of God, when your practice is an outflow of your readiness to obey the word of God, to live your life in the light of the scripture, to say no to whatever the scripture says no to, to say yes to whatever the word of God says yes to, and you are ready to align with the scripture and the word of God. Beloved, not even the devil can stop your glorious future. The glorious future is inevitable. You will simply be unstoppable. You will simply be untouchable. So you must take note of what you do every day. What are your practices every day? Your practices every day will form your lifestyle, will form your habit, and then will determine your outcomes and your experiences. In fact, it will determine the kind of spirit that will be associated with your life. If you are full of negative demonic practices, sinful practices, then demonic spirit will be associated with your life. The Holy Spirit will not be part of your life. But if your practices are rooted in the word of God and in obedience to the scripture, beloved, the Holy Spirit will become inevitably attached to your life. And you and the Holy Spirit can never miss a glorious future because it goes ahead of you and helps you navigate your life taking the correct steps and bringing you across favors, help, and bringing the word of God into fulfillment in your life and bringing the purpose of God into full manifestation in your life. This is very, very important. Now, tonight, let me share with you very briefly seven basic practices that are anointed, that are godly, that must be your practice on a daily basis that will secure a glorious future for you. There may be more, but these seven are fundamental. They secure for us a glorious future. You have to fight a battle and win it to ensure that these practices are your daily practices. These practices are the anointed vehicle that will take you to the future of glory and bring the word of God in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to fulfillment in your life. When your practices are in alignment with the desire of God for, your, for a glorious future, nothing can stop you. It is very important. Number one, these practices are to be practiced on a daily basis. They are not religious. They are spiritual practices. They are anointed practices that you do every day and it becomes your lifestyle and it takes you to a glorious future. Number one, spending time with God daily, both in prayers and in the word of God. The first practice is spending time with God daily, both in prayers and in the word of God. Spending time with God daily, both in prayers and in the word of God. Beloved, when you cultivate this habit, and you make the practice of spending time with God every day, both in prayers and in the word of God, you are on your way to a glorious future. No devil can stop you. 
in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate in it day and night, and then you observe to do. So there must be, there must be an interaction that goes on with God, between you and God, in his word and in prayer on a daily basis. It is an anointed practice that will take you to the future. This is what is called your quiet time. It is called your quiet time, or sometimes we refer to it as your alone moment with God. Your alone moment with God. The time that you set aside to just be with God alone. Just enjoy fellowship with your Father. Just read His Word. Just pray and listen to Him to talk back to you. It is a, it is a sacred period to interact with God and to get into what I call spiritual romance with the Almighty. If it becomes your practice on a daily basis, you are simply on your way to a glorious future. It is a spiritual discipline that enhances your intimacy with the God of your future. It is a spiritual discipline that enhances your intimacy with the God of your future. You must meet with the God of your future daily before you get to that future. Because it is the God of your future that knows the road to that future. If you are not meeting with the God of your future daily, you will miss your road, your future will be compromised, you will not even be able to achieve or get to your future. It is important. There is the God of your future. Beloved, the God of the Bible, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the God of your future. You know why? He made you in his image. He created you fearfully and wonderfully. He designed a purpose for your life. He has a reason for your existence and he's the one that knows exactly what he wants to do through your life. So it is an aberration for you to form a habit of not meeting every day with God. I'm not talking of going to church. If you, have, if you are meeting God for the very first time in the day in the church, you are a latecomer. It is important. Many of us go to church. Most churches have programs in the evening. So you just get up every day just uh, eat and then go out, no talking to God, no prayer, no alone moment, no quiet time. You know, you are eroding the very foundation of your future. And uh, you are making yourself cheap for the attack and the assault of the devil. You won't have strength to really be able to withstand the evil day whenever it comes. If you have not encountered God in the private, you will be a disgrace in the public. It is important that this, we must struggle, we must fight this battle. Do not allow the devil to give you all kind of excuses that tells you that, well, you don't have the time, you don't have the time, you can't have time, you are too busy, the nature of your work, the nature of your business, your schedule is very tight, that you don't have time to meet with God. Before you get to church service, you must have met with God. When you have met with God alone, then church service will be confirming some of the things that God would have told you on, in your quiet time. It is very important. It's easier to pastor people that are meeting with God privately in the church than people that are getting to the church before they discover God. Such people are very difficult to pastor. They don't understand the voice of the Spirit. They can't really flow with divine instruction. And they are easy, it is easy for such people to be deceived by the devil because they have not interacted with God enough to be familiar with his voice to discern his voice. It is important. So the, the, the discipline of quiet time, spending time with God in prayer and the word of God every day, create a time for yourself. Create a space for yourself. Do it every day. Let it be consistent and constant. It's a time to share fellowship with God. That spiritual discipline, it will enhance your intimacy with God. You get closer to God. And the more you are intimate with the God of your future, the more impact you can make in life. Impact is a function of intimacy. When you are not intimate with God, your impact in life will be zero. Your future is as strong and glorious 
as your intimacy with God. It's important. Your future is as strong and glorious as your intimacy with God. Your alone time, that is your quiet time, is where you develop about four things. Number one, in your quiet time, you develop spiritual strength. Spiritual strength. The inner strength that will face the troubles of life. The inner strength and poise that remain unshaken in the midst of the storms of life. The inner strength that becomes your personal assurance that God is faithful and that he will always come through for you no matter the circumstances. That is where you develop that strength. It will be the God that you know, not the God that somebody is trying to tell you. If you don't know God personally, it will be difficult to describe that God to you. It is very, very important. So your quiet time helps you to develop spiritual strength. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, the Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Waiting upon the Lord is in the place of intimacy, in the place of quiet time. You are alone moment with God. You wait with God. You cannot, be, you cannot be too old for this. Even when we become general overseers, we become bishop, we are mighty men of God, and then we are global evangelists. Don't ever let anything stop this practice. Whatever makes this practice uh, impossible will compromise the glory in your future. It's very important. You can never be too mature in the spirit than this practice. This practice is the secret of your spiritual maturity and the secret of your spiritual strength. If you have not had God personally, you will not be able to hear God outside. In fact, his voice, you will not get his voice. There will be discordant tones in the spirit that you will not be able to decode. It is important. The Bible says, for although that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, Daniel eleven thirty-two, 32, the Bible says, And as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall it corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, how do you know your God? We know God in the place of quiet time. We know God in our alone moment. We know God. God reveals himself. God takes delight in revealing himself to you on a very personal note. That is the secret of personal encounter. They that know their God shall be what? Shall be strong and do exploit. In your quiet time, you receive spiritual wisdom. You receive spiritual wisdom. Folly is as a result of lack of interaction with the God of wisdom. A lot of believers today are foolish. Their manifestation shows foolishness. They, 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 they can't arrange their life because they have not been tapping personally into the treasure of wisdom and the source of wisdom that comes from God. So your quiet time, when you spend time with God on a daily basis, as a daily practice, you are having access, unlimited access to the wisdom of God. Number three, you, in your quiet time, you can assess the secret of God for that day. You will assess the secret of God for every day has a secret code to assess every blessing of that day. Every day has a secret code to be able to avoid every evil of that day. There are blessings associated with every day. There are evil associated with every day. But when you know the secret of the day in the presence of God, you will be able to assess the blessing and the good, and you will be able to avoid the evil and the bad of that day. Not only will you assess the secret of God for the day, you will also assess the secret of the day, and that will connect you to accuracy in your steps. You will know where to put your legs, where not to put your legs, what to do for the day. You know, it's so interesting. When God expects you on a daily basis, and you make good your promise, wow, fellowship becomes unlimited. Interactions become unstoppable. And beloved, when you have interacted with God before you get out, I don't know who can stand in your way. It's important. The devil knows this secret. That's why he doesn't want us to get engaged in such spiritual practices. They are practices that secure for us the future of glory. In Psalm 25, verse 14, Psalm 25, verse 14, the Bible says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. Where will you do that? In the secret place.
in the time, in the quiet time, in your alone moment with God. In Psalm 32, verse 8, Psalm 32, verse 8, the Bible says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. You know, the language of that verse connotes God's interest in having personal relationship. I will read the verse again. And I want you to begin to hear the language of that verse. The language of that verse is talking about a personal interest that God has to personally relate with you. Personal relationship. Personal relationship with you. You know, God doesn't want another person. And that person can be a crowd in your fellowship with God. He's talking about his own interest in relating with you, meeting you one-on-one. -on -one. Let me read again. I will instruct thee. That is the specific instruction for your life. The specific instruction that will take you to the future of glory. You will receive it in your quiet time. When you make it your daily practice to spend time with God in prayers and in the word of God. Not only that, and we teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Not every way is your way. There are some ways that are snares. Not every way is your way. May you know your way. And the only way to know your way is to really relate with the way himself. The one who has the way, who knows the way, who knows the road, and can take you through. That's the only place to know it. That's the only way to know it. The way which thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with my eye. With my eye. You know? You will have eye communication. God can communicate with you with his eyes. You can know what he says. When he wink his eyes, you can know what he says. You can get the signals of heaven. You can get the whisper of the spirit. You can get his quiet, his, 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 his quiet voice, his soft voice. You can decode it, his gentle whisper. That happens when you cultivate the habit of spending time with God on a daily basis. Number four, you are going to have authentic insight when you form the habit of spending time with God on a daily basis. You are going to have authentic insight, authentic ideas and instructions that will maximize your day. Now, now see every day to day to day to day to day like that. Every day you are having authentic insight, authentic ideas, authentic instructions maximizing your day. Oh, beloved, you will be on your way to a glorious future. I'm not teaching you religion. I'm teaching you how to be practically relating with God on a daily basis. Day by day means you are heading for a future of glory. So that's the first practice that is important. Number two, the second anointed practice that will take you to a glorious future is keeping your conscience clear before God and man. Keeping your conscience clear before God and man. If your conscience can pass you, you will pass before God. If your conscience can justify you, you are justified before God. Your conscience is the voice of your spirit that will give you the true picture of your life. Conscience don't lie, except you are so terrible that the devil has taken over your conscience. It's very important. So, have keeping a conscience, keeping your conscience clear before God and man is a critical habit or critical practice that will take you to a glorious future. When there is nothing hidden in your conscience, when you are not harboring evil against anybody, when you are not harboring offenses, when you are not harboring malice, when you are not thinking evil, when what you say is a clear picture of your conscience. It's very important. You are going to a glorious future because the Holy Spirit will never depart from you. This is what the Bible says in Acts chapter 24, verse 16. Acts chapter 24, Acts of the Apostles chapter 24, verse 16. And herein do I exercise myself. This is Paul talking. To have always a conscience void of offense Toward God and toward men. Toward God and toward men. Employ your conscience when you are relating with your fellow human being. Either they are there or they are not there, make sure what you have, your relationship with them, will pass the test of conscience. 
will pass the test of conscience. Either they are there or they are not there. Either, go, either you are in the presence of God or you are just doing your normal daily activity. Make sure that everything you are doing with God and with men will pass the test of conscience. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 18, Hebrews 13, 18, the Bible says, pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, living, willing to live honestly. We thought we have a good conscience. We trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. I want to pray for you that you will develop a good conscience Amen. as from today. Amen. Men commendation will not be your pursuit. Amen. But the, pass, the passing the test of conscience will be your pursuit Amen. before God and before man. May you develop the, the interest and the desire to live honestly. Amen. To live honestly. To, that, that you are honest. You are not hypocritical. You are not what you are not. You are not projecting image without uh, the real godly life. You are, not, uh, you are not pretending. You have a clear conscience. You are who you are before God and before man. Nothing to hide. Nothing to scheme about. No secret evil agenda. You are so pure in your heart. Conscience is so clear. You have given the space for the Holy Spirit to operate in your life and not just in your today, also in your tomorrow when you have a clear conscience before God and before man. What does it mean to keep a conscience clear before God and man? It involves doing your best to do what is right always. Doing your best to do what is right always. Before you do anything, find out, is it right? The question to ask is not, is it popular? That's not the question to ask. The question to ask before you do anything is, is it right? Is it the right thing? Many times, popular things are not right. Many things are not, many things are popular that are not right at all. Don't be carried away by what is popular. Either you are a minister of God, either in your personal Christian life as a believer, in your business, in your office, wherever you are, operate by this practice every day. I will do the right thing. No matter who likes it or regardless of who does not like it. Have the courage to do what is right. Ask yourself, is it right? Is it right? Can you ask yourself, is it right? Is it right? Before you do anything, before you say anything, before you take any step, ask yourself, is it right? Right. It's important. So keeping a good conscience, a clear conscience before God and before man involves doing your best to do what is right always. Even if you don't feel like it. It's not every time you will feel like doing what is right, but you still do what is right. Either you feel like it or you do not feel like it. It is a conviction of the heart. It's not the feelings of your emotion. You are committed to do what is right. What is right. Either you feel like it or not. Or even if it is not popular. Beloved, doing what is right is a discipline you must imbibe if you are going to have a glorious future. Doing what is right is a discipline you must imbibe. Don't want to be popular, just want to be right. I tell people regularly, I say, leadership is not just about being popular. Leadership is not just about being nice, but leadership is about being right and being strong. There is a strength of rightness. If you are right, you will be strong. We live in a weak generation and a generation that likes lies and that likes to cut corners and that like to call white black and black white. So if you want to be popular with this world, you will not be able to maintain a stand on what is right. Everywhere you are, you are a teacher in the school, do what is right. You are a civil servant in your place of work, do what is right. You are a student in the school, do what is right. You are a boss in the office, do what is right. It doesn't matter the wretchedness of the system. Keep doing what is right. You know what? You are securing for yourself a glorious future. The future that the devil will not be able to touch. The future that no devil will be able to stop you. It's very important. So it's a discipline you must imbibe. That's how to have a clear conscience. 
before God and before man. It is a practice that will earn you the trust of God when you are doing what is right. Number three, the third practice that will secure for you anointed practice, I mean godly practice, that will secure for you a glorious future is living by faith. Living by faith. You know, when I look at living by faith, I ask the Holy Spirit, what exactly is living by faith? The Holy Spirit tells me, living one day at a time. Living one day at a time. Now, in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, also Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. The Bible makes a very clear statement. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If you are not ready to live by faith, beloved, you'll be a slave of this system. You'll be a slave of the wicked, corrupt system. Most people go into corruption because they want to secure the future. And uh, the future is not secure for them, so they just want to get into things they shouldn't get into, believing that at least I must secure my future. It's important that you live by faith. Otherwise, you'll be a, a slave of man. You'll be a, a slave of this corrupt system. Live by faith. It's very, very important. Living by faith is the key is the key principle of the kingdom that must be your key practice on the earth. Living by faith is the key principle of the kingdom that must be your key practice on the earth. It will keep you away from worries and anxieties of everyday life. When you are living by faith, you will be delivered from worries and anxieties of everyday life. You just trust God. You just put your life in the hands of God. It doesn't stop you from doing what you should be doing every day. But you are doing it with a trust, a faith in God that cannot be shaken. It's very, very important. You believe God will come through for you. He will help you. He will assist you. He will go ahead of you. And he will arrange everything in your favor, both now and the future. So you are not agitated. You are not under the bondage of fear. You are not doubting and you are not unsettled. You simply trust in God. It is very important. You are delivered from anxieties and from the worries of day. Let me tell you a few things about faith. Faith is a positive view of God. A positive view of God. Faith is seeing God exactly the way the Bible has described it. Not what people are saying about it. Not what the circumstance wants you to believe about it. Not what the devil wants you to believe about it. But faith is seeing God the same way the Bible has seen him, has described him. Faith is a positive view of God, a positive view of the ability of God, and a positive view of the willingness of God to help us. You trust in God, you trust in the ability of God, and you trust in the willingness of God to help you. Faith always expects something good to happen. Faith always expects something good to happen. In fact, you are so strong, you are so expectant of good things that you will not even prepare for bad things. It's very important because whatever you are expecting is what you will experience. If you are expecting good things to happen, you will experience good things. If you are expecting bad things to happen, you will experience bad things. So faith always expects something good to happen. And I want to, pray to, to, I want to pray for you tonight that something good is going to happen to you. Something good will happen to you every day. You know why? Because God says so. Because God says so. Not because of the economy not because of the color of your present, not because of your circumstance, simply because God says so. So I believe something good is going to happen. Faith believes that God's word is superior to human thoughts. Faith believes that God's word 
is superior to human thought. God's word is superior to human reasoning. Faith believes that God's thought is superior to human feelings. And faith clings to the truth of the word of God no matter what. Faith clings to the truth of the word of God no matter what. Faith makes the word of God more real to you than the word of man, than the thoughts of man, than the reasoning of man, than even your own personal reasoning. Faith makes the word of God more real to you than what people are saying, than what circumstance is saying, than what the country is saying, than what the world is saying. When you are focusing on the circumstances of life, you will find it difficult to trust the word of God because the word of God and the circumstances of life will never be on the same page. Faith is your ability to invest your life, your trust, your expectation in the word of God and not in the circumstances of life. That's faith. When you are looking at the circumstances of life, you will have no reason to believe God. But when you begin to focus on the truth of the word of God, especially the word that God has said concerning you and concerning your specific situation, you will find it easy to trust God. And let me tell you, when you trust the word of God, the word of God becomes your reality. When you trust circumstances of life, then circumstances of life becomes your reality. It is very, very important. Faith today, trust God with yesterday and for tomorrow. Faith today, trust God with yesterday and for tomorrow. Do you know that yesterday seems to have passed, but yesterday, God can still walk in your yesterday. And then God can still walk in your today. And then God can still walk in your tomorrow. Faith today, trust God with yesterday and then for tomorrow. You trust God with your yesterday, you trust God for your tomorrow. Faith believes it will have grace for tomorrow, tomorrow. Let me say it again. Faith believes that it will have grace tomorrow, tomorrow. You have grace for tomorrow, tomorrow. Let me say it again. I don't want any confusion. It's clear. Faith believes it will have grace for tomorrow, tomorrow. You don't begin to doubt or get anxious about grace for tomorrow. Faith believes that it will have grace for tomorrow, tomorrow. By the time that tomorrow comes, grace will be available. That's faith. So he's doing today is positioning himself today ahead of the grace that is expecting tomorrow. Faith is a life to be lived. It is not just a doctrine to be learned. Faith is a life to be lived. Faith is not just a doctrine to be learned. That's why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Learning faith is not enough is not enough, but living faith is important. Faith is not just a doctrine that you learn. Faith is a life that you live. It's very, very important. So live by faith, beloved. Live by faith. What are you believing God for? What do you believe God for? The Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. If God brings the thought in your heart. Develop faith. It will happen. Keep walking today. Keep believing God. Keep doing the things we are supposed to be doing today. Keep confessing the scripture. Stop living your life according to human complaints and human opinion. When people say there is casting down, the Bible says there is lifting up. Yours is always different. Faith is the difference between you and the unbeliever. Faith in God will engage the power of God to work for you and to condition your future to bring the glory of God out. Faith engages the power of God in your behalf. So give God reasons to release his power. Faith is the reason that God will see to release his power in your life. You and God can never fail. You and God can never, never fail. You and God can never, never fail. Number four, the fourth practice, anointed practice, that will secure a glorious future for you is generosity. 
generosity. Be generous. When you are generous, you are simply determining the future ahead of you. When you are generous today, you are determining the color of your future. Everybody will live life according to his giving. When you have, when there is no, when you have no credit, when there is no nothing in your giving account, you will have nothing to receive. The resources for the future will not be delivered into your hand. It is very, very important. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, the Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, running over, shaking together, will men give into your bosom. It's a, it's a simple spiritual law. What you give today, you didn't lose it, you didn't throw it away, it has gone ahead to wait for you in the future. It is, it is helping to run your credit account as far as God is concerned. And you are going to live your life in the future based on the size of your giving. There is a harvest waiting for you in the future, which is a product of the seed you are giving today. The seed principle is a critical life principle. When you don't understand the seed principle, you will not understand a glorious future. It is very, very important. I discovered today that the world is full of selfish people. The world is full of stingy people. The world is full of greedy people. But God wants us to be generous. Generosity under God gives you a glorious future, no matter what. Giving makes the devil mad. You know why? Because the devil is a taker. He is not a giver. Giving makes the devil mad because the devil is a taker. He is not a giver. So anytime you are giving, you are exhibiting the nature of God. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his only begotten son. Do you know how many sons God has recovered back in glory today? Do you know how many sons God has recovered back in glory today simply because he gave his only begotten son? What if he withheld his only begotten son? Do you think we have many sons to glory today? If that principle can work for God, it will work for anybody. Is a principle, a spiritual principle that secures a glorious future. It is very, very important. Don't be a taker. Be a giver in life. It secures a glorious future for you. Nothing is too small to give. Giving is not a duty, but a God-given privilege. Write that in capital letter. Don't ever forget it. Giving is not a duty. It is a God-given privilege. When you see giving as a duty, you begin to murmur. You begin to complain. You begin to complain. And especially when the person you have given something to did not reward you or did not acknowledge it, you begin to complain and you will lose your reward. You will lose your harvest. Beloved, giving is not a duty. Giving is a God-given privilege. People who are self-centered are some of the most miserable people in the world. People who are self-centered are some of the most unproductive people in the world. Are you getting, did, did you get that? People who are self-centered are some of the most unreasonable people. Most, most, most unproductive people. Selfish and stingy Christians are useless and unfruitful in God's kingdom. You cannot have a solid relationship with a giver God or a giving God, let me put it that way. When you are stingy, God is a giver. You can't be a taker all the time and have a solid relationship with God. You cannot prosper in the purpose of God. You cannot be fruitful in the agenda of God on the earth. You cannot be relevant in the purpose of God on the earth when you are stingy, when you are not generous. The greatest demonstration of divine generosity is John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Those who are stingy are useless and unfruitful in the kingdom of God. But those who give cheerfully, those who give generously, are happy, fulfilled, and highly effective. 
Now, let me tell you some of the things you should develop yourself to give. Because when you talk of giving, many people think it is just about money alone. Money is important, but it is not all about money. In fact, if you do not give some other things I want to mention, your money will be useless. Giving is not just about money, because once you talk about giving today, everybody is saying about money. People are so sensitive about the issue of money. And here is money. They want to collect money again. They want to collect money. And myopic pastors who do not have an understanding of the spiritual nature of giving narrow it down to money alone. No. It's important. If you understand the Bible very well, you will know that God is not asking for our money first and foremost. He's asking for you, yourself. Give me your heart. Give yourself to me. When people cannot give themselves to God, they won't be able to give their money. But if you have given yourself to God, it will be a pleasure. It will be a joy. It will be a privilege to give your, your money. So we must, not, we must take the first thing first and not just be about money. Pastors who want to steal and who wants to defraud people. We have too many fake pastors nowadays, fake ministers, fake prophets that they are just after the money of people, just after the pocket of people. They are not after ministry. They are not after helping people to know God and teaching people the word of just want the money. And they have bastardized the principle, the spiritual principle of giving as a way to prepare for yourself a glorious future. So the first thing you do, give help. That's number one, give help. Give help, 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 H-E-L-P, give it. Look at your life today, who can you help? Who can you help? Who is within your immediate vicinity that you can help? Give help. Giving help can be just ordinary greeting. Giving help can be just ordinary helping somebody to do something. Give help. Be a helper. Give help. Number two, give encouragement. Give encouragement. It's not every time people need your money. Men, give encouragement. Say words of encouragement. It's, it's giving. Many people are too stingy with encouragement. They are too generous with their criticism. Give encouragement. Number three, give compliment. Give compliment. Give compliment. Number four, give yourself. Yourself. Give yourself. A husband is supposed to give himself. A pastor is supposed to give himself. A believer is supposed to give himself. Give yourself. Number next, give your time. Your time. Give your time. Time is even more than money. Give your time. Number six, give your talent. Give your talent. Serve your talent to your generation. That's when you should be ready to die. Serve it. When you have not served it out to your generation, you shouldn't be thinking of dying. Let your generation benefit from the talent that God has given you. Give your talent. Let your church benefit from your talent. You are securing for yourself a glorious future. What do you know to do? What talents do you have? What is your natural endowment? Let your church benefit. Let the work of God benefit. Let your neighbor benefit. Let your world, your generation benefit. Give your talent. Give your abilities. Give your abilities. Give gifts. Your gifts. Give it. Give it. There are times that you will need to serve your gift and you don't want to take money for it. Just give it. You are not losing anything. He's painting for you a glorious future. Give forgiveness. Give forgiveness. And then give money. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And as many things you can, just give. Just cultivate the art of giving. So nobody can say, I have nothing to give. Anybody that say, I have nothing to give has no revelation of giving. Because when people don't have money, they say, I have nothing to give. You have many things to give apart from money. It's very, very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, this is the amplified version. This is how the Bible puts it. It says, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and proposed in his heart, not reluctantly. When you give reluctantly, you have canceled your glorious future. Not reluctantly, not sorrowfully. When you are giving out of sorrow, you are not feeling good. You, are, you, are, you feel you are missing it. You don't want to give it. You have canceled your reward. You have destroyed the glorious future. Don't give sorrowfully. Not giving under compulsion. 
I must give, whether I like it or not. Mm -mm. Set to your mind. Give cheerfully. That's what the Bible says. For God loves, that is, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver in the Amplified Bible is described as a joyous, prompt giver. That is, whose heart is in his giving. A man whose heart is in his giving. You give heartily without expecting anything in return. That's how to give. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 9, He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, but he, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Now let me take the remaining three quickly. Number five, practice peace. Anointed practice that will take you to your glorious future is practicing peace. Peace. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace because his heart stayed, is stayed on you. Practice peace. Learn to be peaceful. Do not be violent. Just learn to be peaceful. Learn to receive the peace of God and appropriate it in the storms of life. First of all, be at peace with yourself then you can be at peace with other people. Practice peace. It's a discipline. Practice peace. Don't be a troublesome person. Let, the, let your environment be peaceful. Let your inner man be peaceful. Let your outward presentation be peaceful. Let peace be your practice every day. That's when the God of peace can be with you. And you can only practice peace when you are at peace with God. And once you are at peace with God, you'll be at peace with yourself. And when you are at peace with yourself, you'll be at peace with your neighbor. Avoid nagging. Avoid nagging. All the times you are nagging, nagging, nagging. You just want to fight. You are just in a mode of fighting. Avoid nagging. Avoid the touchy nature. Don't be too touchy. Before they say anything, you just respond in a terrible way. You know? You are giving yourself a very bad name. And you are attracting demons around your life. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of peace. Don't be petty. Don't be petty. Easily misinterpret things. Easily take things too personal. Don't be petty. Don't be immature. Those are the things that disrupt peace. It will stop you from practicing. Don't be immature. Be mature. Be mature. Don't be troublesome. Don't be troublesome. Don't be problematic. Don't be problematic. Every problem is traceable to you. Don't be temperamental. Relax. Relax. Don't be temperamental, everything, just take it hot, take it hot, take it hot. Don't be, don't be judgmental. Don't be judgmental. Don't be a flatterer. Don't be a truth killer. It's very important. Practice peace. Anytime you are, when, when you enter a place, let the peace of God enter with you. Even when there is storm there, by the time you get there, have a development in the spirit that can calm it down. You know, just like Jesus was able to calm the storm. He said, peace be still. When the storm was raging, let your personality, your presence, be a bringer of peace. Let your word bring peace. Let your attitude bring peace. Don't fuel any crisis. Disperse it and bring peace. It's secure for you a glorious future. Number six. Learn to finish what you start. Learn to finish what you start. It will secure for you a glorious future. I want you to write down this scripture because there is no time for me to read them. You can read it when you on your personal uh, time. Luke 14, 28 to 30. Luke 14, 28 to 30. Then Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Finish what you start. Don't abandon things. Be thorough. It will secure for you a glorious future. Whatever you can't finish, don't start it. But once you start, always finish. It's very important. Be a good starter. Be a great finisher. Be a good starter. Be a great finisher. God started creating the heaven and the earth. He finished and then he rested. God is not a God that abandoned project. He's the Alpha, and equally is the Omega. He's the beginning, 
and equally is the end. Is the God of the beginning, is the God of the middle of the road, and is the God of a great and happy ending. It's very important. And to finish what you start will help you to develop the discipline of commitment and consistency. Many people have been promising, I will read the Bible, I will read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Every year they start, they don't finish. Every year they start, they don't finish. People start courses, they abandon the courses. They don't finish their courses. They just start things, they don't finish. They just, they take delight in starting, but they won't finish. You know, there is, there, there is, this, there is this expression in Yoruba. I wish I could express it the way it is being expressed in Yoruba, that somebody will start something and it looks so, so wonderful, so, so serious, and then so serious, and then all is for a sudden, it just gives up. That's a demonic spirit. It destroys your future. The future is for finishers. I mean, good finishers, great finishers. They are the one that will get to tomorrow. Very important. That's why many people today abandon their marriage. This woman is not good. This man is not good. The next thing is they beat themselves and pack up the relationship. There is no commitment. There is no consistency to nurture the relationship, to stay at it, to pay prices, and see that it works. And then they can, they can be a good finisher. That is when you can be a blessing to your generation. Whatever you start and you don't finish is an abandonment. It's an abortion of destiny. It doesn't secure the future. Very important. It, when you finish, it gives you a sense of purpose and accomplishment. When you finish something, you start. It gives you a sense of purpose and accomplishment. But when you fail to finish, it gives you a sense of a failure. You feel frustrated. It attracts frustration to you. When you finish what you start, it increases your diligence. It increases your diligence. That, that course you have started, don't abandon it no matter what. Finish it all graduate and be a blessing to your generation. The journey will be tough, but beloved, the ending will be glorious. The tougher the journey, the better the ending. It's very important. The greater the test, the greater the testimony. The joy of it all is to finish. The Bible says, if weeping endure for a night, joy comes in the morning. So when you finish what you start, it gives you, it increases your diligence. It increases your steadfastness and determination your steadfastness and determination. It helps you not to give up, not to, just, not to just give up, not to just throw in the towel. It makes you trustworthy. It makes you trustworthy. When you finish what you start, it makes you talk. God can take you serious. Men can take you serious. And great things can be committed into your hand. It provokes the spirit of excellence in you when you finish what you start. It provokes the spirit of excellence. It provokes the spirit of integrity. It makes you generally effective, generally effective and efficient in life. Let me take the last one as we pray. Living by discernment. That's, your, that's a daily practice that will secure for you a glorious future. Live by discernment. Don't live by sight. Live by discernment. Beloved, there is more to life than meets the eye, especially the natural eye. Things are not always what they appear to be. If you are not going to be a victim of fraud, a victim of attacks, a victim of satanic deception, as you go to the future, you must learn to live by discernment. By discernment. Live by discernment. You will have a glorious future. Many people are in prison today because they lack discernment. Many people have been executed for the offense they know nothing about because they lack discernment. Most people's business have collapsed today, not because of the devil attacking them, but because they lack discernment. They lack discernment. Most of the fraudsters, the 419 people, the, 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 the dubious people, they, are, they, are, they, they always, they, they, those who are victims of such people are people that lack discernment. A lot of pastors today that are generally innocent, have, have gotten their reputation soiled and scandal around their life because they lack discernment. Don't be too careless. Life is not as it appears. There is more to life than meet the eye. 
Most ladies today that are godly, innocent, and simple are falling victim of a useless man. They fall into the hand of a useless man. They fall into the hand of a joker, a dubious person in marriage. And that man has messed up their life just because they lack discernment. That a man is putting on suits doesn't mean he's a child of God. The devil also put on suits these days. That a woman is um, well-dressed and uh, singing with a sonorous voice doesn't mean that she's a, she's a child of God. We have demonic agents today are good singers. Live by discernment. Many people give you money and you collect it. Find out the source of this money and find out what exactly is their interest in giving you money. Nobody's going to give you anything good free of charge without an inner motive. Live by discernment. Somebody that is not happy with you before that used to criticize you, suddenly, suddenly just become generous, become good, become nice, and then you say he has changed, and then you throw, you just, you just throw away your guts. You will be a victim of a satanic setup. Live by discernment. The only person that wants your life to be good and glorious is your God. The devil and his agents are looking for your downfall. Don't be careless. Don't be frivolous. Many people today have been poisoned. They die untimely because they don't have discernment. They eat what they're not supposed to eat. They drink what they're not supposed to drink. They perish because they don't have discernment. May you come under the anointing for discernment. May you come, that's when you are safe. May you come under the anointing for discernment. Amen. Many people have de divulged their secret to people that, they, that shouldn't even know anything about them because they lack discernment. They talk to everybody. They talk to everybody they see. They tell them everything about themselves. They say, I'm simple, I'm open, I'm, I'm straightforward. That's stupidity. That's foolishness. Live by discernment. Live by discernment. Discernment means spiritual understanding. That's discernment. Simple definition of discernment is spiritual understanding. Having an understanding of a person, of the spiritual nature of a person. Because when you see somebody in the physical, that is not all to know about that person. Human beings are like iceberg, iceberg. Only 20% of them are above the water. The remaining 80% is inside the water. If you have watched this film, uh, um, Titanic, that is one of the, that's the, that's the reason for the accident. The iceberg that caused the accident is very small on the surface, but very mighty under the surface. That's how human beings are. So the only thing you can see physically is just 20% of them. The remaining 80% will determine what you will have with them. So discernment is spiritual understanding. Do you have spiritual understanding of your environment? Do you have spiritual understanding of the person you call your best friend? Do you have spiritual understanding of the nature of the business you want to do? Do you have spiritual understanding of the person you are confiding in? You know, things are not the same way it appears in the physical. There are spiritual nature of things. There are spiritual nature of places. There are spiritual nature of people. When you have the understanding of the spiritual nature, you are strong in discernment. Discernment is spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. So natural understanding of anything, natural understanding of anybody, natural understanding of any place is not enough reason to make commitment. Let me say it again. Natural understanding of anything, natural understanding of anybody, natural understanding of any place is not enough to make commitment. Let your commitment to people, your commitment to places, your commitment to things be a product of your spiritual understanding of them. That's when discernment is, is in place. And that's when you are going to secure for yourself a glorious future. Pay attention to your spirits. Tell yourself every day, even before you sleep tonight, tell yourself regularly, pay attention to your spirit. Pay attention to your spirit. Your spirit can never be wrong. Your spirit will be right about things because it sees more than the eyes can see. Know when you do not feel good about something in your spirit. As we grow in our understanding of the word of God and in our relationship with him, we also grow in our ability to desire. Let me say that again because it's about the last statement I'm going to make. As we grow in our understanding of the word of God, that's why the word of God is very important. Because one of the things the word of God does for you is it sharpens your spirit. It's like a file. When you want to file your cutlass or your equipment, 
so that your equipment will be able to will be will be so sharp enough to cut. You understand? That's exactly what the word of God does. The word of God is the file of your spirit. It files your spirit. It sharpens your spirit. It deepens your sensitivity. The food of your spirit is the word of God. So when you are stabbing your spirit with the word of God, you will never be able to live by discernment. And you will always be a victim of avoidable danger, avoidable crisis. Because you will just be a foolish person getting into the pit that the devil has already prepared for you just because you are limited in your understanding. Your natural understanding of anybody can never guarantee a future for you. It's your spiritual understanding that guarantees a future for you. So it's very important. So as we grow in our understanding of the word of God and in our relationship with God, we will always grow in our ability to desire. That's the, that's, the, that's the basis of spiritual maturity. Everybody is saying, this business is good, this business is good, this business is good, and you just say it's good. Wonderful business presentation, but your spirit is scratching you and saying, no, relax. Relax. Will you be discerning enough to listen to your spirit and then relax a little bit? Otherwise, you are going to lose your basic capital. A lot of people have lost their capital because they are too forward in the flesh. They are not discerning in the spirit. I wish I can continue more. I want to pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will rest upon these words, Amen. that these words will become the practices of your life. Amen. And when you go through these seven basic practices, the anointed practices, you know what? It will secure for you a glorious future. Amen. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you tonight. I want to give you all the glory and honor. This message is coming because there is already a glorious future for everyone. And we are grateful because we are a good God. Lord, I ask that everyone will be able to apply this truth into their life. That everyone will be so intentional about the practices of their life on every daily basis. Mm -hmm. And they will be going to the future with a strong practice. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray today that the Holy Spirit will show you every evil practices that destroy your future yeah. in your life. Every negative habit that trade your future. Let the Holy Spirit begin to open your eyes yeah. and see them. And you'll be able to do something about them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will not be weak as you go to the future. You will be strong. You will be healthy. You will be sensitive. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon you. Yeah. Accuracy will be your portion. Your steps will be sure in the name of Jesus. The glorious future will never be compromised. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let me repeat the announcement I made when I, before I started the other time. There are two of them for now. If there are other ones, we will be sending it through all our social media platforms, our Telegram, WhatsApp, Facebook and all that. Just watch out for any other additional announcement that may come up as we go on. But by the grace of God, this Saturday, 18th July, 6 p.m. Nigerian time, will be time for Leading Light Fellowship. We've started Leading Light program since 2012, and it's a platform that God has ordained to develop tomorrow's leader today. Currently, I'm dealing with the subject of making decisions, accurate decisions, learning, using biblical principles to make correct decisions of life because your decisions will take you to a glorious destination. And we have been looking at the biblical principles that can help you to make correct, sound, qualitative decisions of life. So this Saturday, again, I'm going to continue by the grace of God and it shall be well with you, 6 p.m. Nigerian time. That meeting is free for everybody. The code and all the details about it will be uh, put upon our social media platforms and then you'll get it as um, a message on your WhatsApp or whatever. So make sure you invite your friends, 6 p.m. on Saturday to be in Leading Light Fellowship. Apart from that, the Destiny and Leadership School, Lesson 2 will take place this month last Sunday of July, July 26th precisely, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Nigerian time. Watch out basically from tomorrow about the registration procedure for this month. 
It is, uh, we started last week, I mean, last month, and we have, we have 12 lessons in the basic leadership course for now, 12 lessons. Lesson one is already done. We are getting to lesson two this month. For Destiny and Leadership School, you will have to pay a token of 1,000 Naira to register. The format of registration for this month will also be the details of which will be given on our flyers that will be on, um, on Facebook and all our social media platform from tomorrow. Just follow all the instructions uh, in those flyers to get yourself registered. And we keep moving on as God help us. It is well with you. Those of you that have been part of Destiny and Leadership School last month, make sure you attend to your assignment. So, and also get ready with your assignment. The assignment will develop you personally. The assignment will help you. That's the secret of the assignment. If you just get the assignment and you don't do, the, you don't do it, you don't practice it, you won't get the benefit of the lesson. So the assignment is meant to drive the lesson into your spirit until it becomes what you can run with in life. So it is very, very important. Then compile your question for last lesson. And please send it the latest by 24th of this uh, month. Let it come in. The first 30 minutes will be used to, I mean, treat these uh, questions. It's also interactive. And the ones we can take, if it is personal questions, you can always interact with me. Download Telegram application on your device and let us know so that we can include you add you to the Telegram, the platform on Telegram for Destiny and Leadership School. And every any question you want to ask, you are free to ask at any point in time, whatever is not clear. Invite your friends to be part of DLS. DLS is for everybody and the Lord will do you good. It is well with you in Jesus' name. See you on Saturday by the grace of God. God bless you. Amen.